Your Excellency, former Governor of Kaduna, Semutayero, thank you so much for talking to us on Channels Television. Thank you very much for having me in your program. Let's get some uh, views and perhaps extract some knowledge from you. This is a state you've been a former commissioner, a former governor, you know so well. And, but there's been a lingering problem, a challenge for every governor and the people of Kaduna State, which is usually the southern Kaduna, uh, the clashes and the deaths and the killings that we've seen. Things have gotten bad recently. What do you think is at the very root of this? What do you think is the major cause? Well, alhamdulillah, the major cause of this problem, if we can say that is uh, dated back to so many years, uh, since 1988 or 82 thereabout, uh, there are so many challenges in the southern part of the state. Uh, mostly ethno-religious issues, uh, land disputes issues, and so many of them. Uh, but over the years, different governments have tried different methods in resolving these issues. Because every particular problem that comes in, you have to have a different solution to it. So from 2007, when uh, I joined government as a commissioner of finance, these kind of challenges are also there between uh, the herders and the farmers mostly and also be between the different ethno-religious, uh, uh, ethnic, uh, different ethnic groups in the southern part of the state. But you find out that in most cases, in most cases, we try to solve this problem locally by using the traditional institution, by using the religious uh, leaders, and then the government will also come in. And the lack of social amenities also is creating these kind of problems. And then the, the hardest uh, movement, uh, which also creates uh, all these kind of problems. So to me, the best way to resolve these issues, especially in the southern part of the state, is by all of us coming together both the Muslims, the Christians, the other different tribes to come together and fight this issue that we want to live in peace, we want to understand each other, and then we want to see how we can move forward. Without that, I don't think we're going to have a solution to that. Uh, during our time, we tried this kind of problem uh, solution by bringing everybody on board trying to see that, yes, we need to understand each other, we need to be patient with each other, and we need to respect our various views so that we can live in peace. Without living in peace, there is no way we can have development and all other social amenities that we need to have. So we need to cooperate with each other. Cooperation is very, very key and is very, very important. So without cooperation, without understanding, without everybody being on board, without everybody being hard and then giving his own right, the social justice that we need to be fair to everybody is what we need to solve this problem, especially in the southern part of the state. How do you feel when people say genocide is the name of what is happening there? Well, I can't say that it is genocide that is happening in, in, in the southern part of the state because it's not only a particular tribe or religion that is being affected. Both the Muslims, the Christians, the various different tribes are being affected by all this crisis that has been going on in the southern part of the states. So, uh, I know you made a lot of promises in the, the, the death of uh, the former governor. Uh, you promised infrastructure to the people of southern Kaduna, and you mentioned the issue, social issues that are major, uh, the major problem in that region, uh, would you say that the southern Kaduna region of the state is less developed? And that's perhaps one of the issues. Would you say so? No, I'm, only referring, I'm not only referring to southern Kaduna in terms of social amenities. The entire state and even the entire country lacks a lot of social amenities. The infrastructure deficit that we have is very huge. Uh, because the resources are not there to meet up with all this infrastructure de uh, deficit that we have. But what I'm saying is that 
the southern part of the states from 1999 to this that I know has been developed. Oh, a lot of roads were there, a lot of schools were there, a lot of hospitals, and so many things. But if you look at the terrain in the southern part of Kaduna, it's different from the terrain in the northern part. Because the, the settlements, the way people are living in that area, you'll find that a lot of distance between one home or one house and the other. So you see some hamlets in different locations. And when I was a governor, there was a crisis in another village, which when we went there, we saw that they need to cross to come very close to each other in order to uh, to defend themselves in case of any attack or in case of anybody who wants to create problem. But if you have a house and then the next house you see is about one to two hundred meters, then there's going to be a big challenge. So it's quite different from the way it is in the northern part or in the central uh, part of the state. So, I mean, you look at the Abuja Kaduna Expressway, the people dread to travel by road in that particular uh, axis. Um, have you been on that road recently? I mean, on Friday, on Thursday, I passed that road. But what are the feelings of people as regarding the situation in that region and what has made in, uh, the insecurity situation uh, risen in recent times? You see, the Abuja Kaduna Road. Like I said, uh, from 2000 and some, or in 2008, uh, the then administration in 2008, under the former vice president, he was the governor of the state, uh, came up with the idea of having an Operation Yagi. It's an operational, it's a security outfit where all the security formations that we have in the states come together and then form a force and then they were funded and then provided with all the necessary uh, 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 equipment that they can help in addressing some security challenges that we have in the state. That route, you will find out that up to the time I left government, we have a lot of vehicles, security vehicles that are patrolling that route in order to give comfort to people and then to address any issue that will come within a period of 10, 15, or 30 minutes. But if you look at it now, most of the securities that you see on that road are stationed in a particular area. So between uh, this station and the next station, anything can happen in between where the security people are, uh, are standing. But during our time, they patrol the whole road that is from Kaduna up to Tapa. And then there are also security uh, 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 equipment, sorry, uh, audio communication equipment that you can communicate. As a governor, you have your own code, you have your own walkie talkie, you can talk to them, you know what is happening. So these things, you need to put so many eyes on the security agencies for them to be patrolling that area. The governor then used to pass through that road and make sure that if he doesn't see enough vehicles on the road, he will ask. During your call was the same thing, and during my time was the same thing. And we handed over all these issues. But you know, government, every government has its own priority. And every government has its own way of looking at things. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, the security outfit is not functioning as it used to. So it's not only Abuja Kaduna Road. If you also see Kaduna, Zaria, Kazaria, Kano Road, you also see all these kind of issues. So to me, is not just to have a checkpoint, but is to have a patrol on the road. We need to have a lot of securities on that road patrolling and not staying as a checkpoint. Interesting. Uh, so uh, you look. At, you mentioned the issue of the herders and farmers clash. Yes. Um, this is being a long-term problem for Cardinal State, but it's now becoming a regional problem. It's becoming a national. Uh, crisis on our hands and a lot of people have been looking into the solutions you find a lot of interventions on how to resolve this crisis what would you say is could be the solution to that major challenge 
Now, before we talk of the solution to the challenges of herders and farmers, from time immemorial, herders and farmers have a lot of problems, had a lot of clashes. Because a farmer that has done some cultivations in his farm and then somebody will come with his cows or with his animals and then at the end of the day destroy it, definitely there is going to be a problem. This issue has been there. And then if you look at the roots, the great the roots that these herders follow are now cities or are now farmlands. And then these cows, when they come, they pass through that route. They know the route, some of them know the route, and they try to pass through it. If it is a farm now, they enter somebody's farm and then it becomes a problem. If it is a city, you see them in cities moving. So the, so part of the solution is to have a grazing reserve or to make sure that you, you put these uh, cows and then these uh, uh, herders in one place. Like a uh, ranch. Like, like a ranch. And then even during our time, we tried to do it at the federal level. I was part of the committee headed by uh, Governor Inyako to see how we can have a ranch in different parts of the of the country so that we allow uh, uh, the cows to stay there. Like in Kaduna, we have we have a, a, a Laduga grazing reserve. Uh, it's in the southern part of the state. It's a large uh, area. It's over about 70,000 square kilometers. It's purely for grazing. But these people that we see that are moving, most of them comes from outside Nigeria. The real Fulanis, the real herders in the country are not moving around like the way the other people that comes in from other countries. So that is part of the challenge that we have. So to me, we have to have an ECOWAS agreement whereby the movements of all these cattle from outside uh, different countries should be restricted, should be controlled. Because if we don't have that, then somebody will come from Niger or from Mali without knowing what is happening in Nigeria and then creates a problem for the people in Nigeria and then he leaves. So I think the ECOWAS protocols has to be reviewed, has to be looked into so that all the uh, ECOWAS countries around us here will have a solution to this. Without having that kind of thing, I don't think we're going to because Nigeria does not have enough land to have ranches for these cows. When the governors for met and they decided and they said governors need to take charge of their forest reserves. Mm. Do you think that uh, you've sat in that state before? You think that Nigerian governors, based on the powers conferred on them by the constitution, do they have enough powers to be able to police or uh, be a chief security officer of the estates? Well, to me, when you call governors as chief security officers, to me, it's just by name. Or any, because are they really the chief security officers of their respective state? Do they control the security officers? Do they control the police? Do they control the army? Do they control? Who do they control? So this is part of the challenge of the governors. Even, they don't call any shots? No, what I'm saying is that you, you, don't have, you don't have the power to tell them this is what they are going to do. They are, they are not under you. They are under the federal government. The police are under the federal government. The military, whatever, they are under the federal government. They take directly from their superiors. But you as a governor, is just to provide logistics to ensure that, yes, what you want in your state is done. But that is why a lot of people are agitating and also calling for state policy. Even during our time, that issue was there. And then people are saying that, yes, the governors need to have uh, their own security that they can control, they can direct, they can tell them to do it. But that one too has its own challenge. So we have to find a way of uh, agreeing and having a synergy between the federal government, the state governments, and then the security agencies, whereby, yes, uh, the governors have some uh, level of... Uh, of control on the security uh, people in their state, not only on logistics. Is he a matter of more powers in terms of allowing the state, the state, you, you subscribe to state police and that's what you subscribe to. 
No, I'm not saying I have subscribed to police, uh, state policing because it also have its own challenge. If the governors will not use that as a weapon to create another problem by intimidating opponents or the, whoever that is criticizing uh, the way government, uh, the governors are conducting their affairs, if it's going to be used for the purpose of ensuring security and safety for the lives and property of the people, I subscribe to state policy. So, for those who are saying, let us restructure. Yes. Uh, in 2014, we saw the confab. But how relevant is that with our uh, contemporary problems? Well, to me, in Nigeria, when somebody say, we need to restructure, you need to ask him, what does he mean by structure? restructure? Because people have differs in restructure. But to me, the kind of power that the federal government has, it needs to go down to states and the local government. That is the evolution of power. By trying to see that, yes, the state government and the local governments have more responsibility, have more powers in order to carry out so many issues. That then the federal government should take care of both the, the security, the judiciary, uh, the internal security, uh, and, the, and then other issues like the health, education, and so many other issues need to go back to states, need to go back to local government. And then that is the way I look at it on the issue of restructure. But some will look at it in a different way. L let's talk about the uh, situation in Kaduna State. How would you assess Governor Erufai's performance? Well, personally, I don't like to assess Governor Erufai because he knows what is happening in Kaduna. He is there now. He knows the challenges that he is facing. I was there before, so I don't want to give him any mark and say he is like this or like that. I'm only praying for him. May Allah give him the wisdom to help the people of Kaduna by securing their lives and their property and then also providing all the social needs that they need. Is he doing well? I am not going to assess the current governor. We will only assess him when he leaves office. Well, are you hoping to go back as governor of Kaduna State? Yes, I have the opportunity. I can still contest for the governor. Or do you think you, you will? Are you planning to? By the grace of God. You will? By the grace of God. Um, your party as it is right now, is it organized enough to be able to get you back in office? Well, actually, the party has its own challenges, and all the political parties have their own challenges, even the APC to have their own challenges. But we are hoping we are going to address these challenges, and we are going to correct all the things that we need to correct in order for us to win election in 2023. Not only in Kaduna State, but also in, at the federal level. But let's talk about Kaduna State. Governor Herufai defeated you, I mean, when you were seeking re-election. You think that the APC, uh, as it's currently constituted in Kaduna State, the, uh, the PDP can be able to oust them? Well, 2015 election, if you want me to say that, 2015 election, APC has a combination of different political parties, including PDP members. And then the tsunami that came in 2015, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, because of the popularity of the current president, especially in the north. It's not that those that contested were able to, to defeat those that were there. But because of what happened in 2015, a lot of people left PDP, a lot of people left other political parties. Uh, and then if you look at it, PDP has been in power for 16 years, both at the national and the state level, at the Kaduna or so. And then people wanted to have a change to test and see whether they will get what they want. But at the end of the day, they have tested it, they have gotten the change, and they know what the change is all about. So to me, if PDP is organized at the national level and organized at the state level, particularly in Kaduna State, definitely we are going to win this election because Kaduna is a PDP state. Do you think Nigerians trust PDP? Why not? Because 
PDP was in power for 16 years. And all the mistakes and all the things that PDP that has done have now realized its own mistakes and they are ready to correct them and they are ready to uh, assist the people to, to ensure that people live in peace and also their welfare is being uh, taken care of. So to me, what we need in PDP is for PDP to be organized. The only thing that is worrying people is that PDP is not organized now. There are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of problems, there are a lot of uh, uh, internal democracy challenges that we have in PDP. Once we are able to, to overcome all these things, I think the next that people will vote for is PDP. So this brings me to the question of where could or where would the next president come from? War region. Your party started it. It's become a national unwritten rule where presidency is being zoned. And in fact, in several states, zoning has now been the name of the game. Where do you think that the next president should come from? Based are, you on zoning referring, are you referring to the PDP or you are referring to all other political I'm talking parties? about generally because if you look at it, either PDP or APC, President Gulo Jonathan was of the PDP, was a southerner. Yes. President Muhammad Buhari is from is a northerner, is from the APC. Yes. So in that sense, you would say Olusegun Basunga from 1999 to Umaru, uh, Mus uh, Yaradua and to Gulo Jonathan. And now uh, we have uh, Muhammad Buhari, who seems to have had south, north, south, north. Mm -hmm. For 2023, where do you think that the next president should come from? Well, that's why I ask you, are you referring to PDP or all other political parties? Because... Uh, For the PDP, where do you think? What would you... PDP, because you're a chieftain of the PDP. Yes, the PDP, if you look at it, we still... PDP has not sat down yet to agree on the zoning formula or where the president will come from. But in 2014... So in 2018 or the 2019, I was part of it. And then, uh, based on the President Goodluck Jonathan came from the southern part, and they agreed that the next president should come from the northern part of it. Since PDP did not win the election, I don't think that one would change. I don't think. But at, at the end of the day, when we sit down, then we'll be able to agree where the president will come from. Since PDP did not win that election, the, uh, the president did not come from the northern part from the PDP and I think it will be fair for a PDP to allow the president to come from the northern part of the country. But for the APC, they don't have a zoning formula in their, in their constitution. Uh, everybody can, 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 can contest for the president. Uh, but if you're going to be fair to Nigerians, APC should look at the possibility of having a southern president in their in their uh, as their candidate. So invariably, Atiku Abubakar should get another opportunity. Why not? Is that what you're saying? Everybody, even me, if I decide to contest for the president, I can still do it. It's not only Atiku Abubakar; other has contested. They ha also have the opportunity of uh, of uh, contesting in the party. But at the end of the day, whoever the party uh, gives the ticket. Is the man that we are going to support. A very popular, eminent Nigerian, uh, interestingly, is from Kaduna State, um, Baba Ahmed, has criticized and said, look, APC and PDP are no alternative. Uh, going forward, Nigerians should not look in that direction. They should look at all the alternatives. And they said the mega party that they want to change how politics is being played and how governance should be handled in Nigeria. For those who think that the APC and the PDP are the problems of Nigeria, of Nigeria and should not be considered for in 2023, what do you say to them? So I'm going to ask you, based on what uh, my brother told you, uh, is it Hakim? Hakim Baba Ahmed. Now, are we going to change the players the key, the players, or the political players, are they going to come from a different country or from the moon? Are they not going to be Nigerians? So to me, it's not the political party that is the problem. 
we are the problem. The when you say we? I mean the Nigerian people are the problem of Nigeria. Not, not the, the political, not the class. political class. Not as when I say Nigerian people. But, but, but he's saying that the political class, especially because the PDP and APC are the elsewhere political class. In it depends on how you look at it. The man at the lower level, at the ward level, at the polling unit level, who is a politician, sometimes you don't look at him as a part of the political class. You are looking at the elites, and they are the ones that move the politics of Nigeria, because politics is local and is being played at the ward level and at the polling unit. So if you don't win your election in your polling unit, no matter how big you are, somebody who is very small in your own polling unit can mess you up. But you are not only looking at the elites. Now, if you look at the APC and you look at the PDP, even if you are going to have another political party, being a mega party or whatever, you are going to draw people from APC, people from PDP, people from other political party, and they will join that party again. Don't forget, that's what APC did in 2014. From AMPP, ACN, PDP, Afghan, and then they form APC. And now we are saying that both the two political parties, we should have another political party. If we are going to have another political party, then let the people that will join that political party and be relevant in that political party being people that have a fresh mind, they were not part of APC, they were not part of PDP, they were not part of any government before, then I think we can have the desired change that we think that we can have. But if people will move from those political parties, they will go with the same way they behave and the same way they do their things in their various parties. Governor Mukta Yero, former governor of Kaduna, said, thank you so much for talking to us on China's television. Thank you very much. Thank you so much indeed.